Hey everybody, uh, this is Carl, uh, back again for another spoiler review. It's Christmas Eve, so happy holidays everybody. Hope you all having a nice holiday weekend. Uh, I'm posting uh, my last two, but this movie and my last two Christmas uh, movie reviews here on Twitch to be later posted on YouTube. Right now, um, I, I received like a copyright strike because I tried to do like a reaction to a death battle uh, episode, and it was just Omni Man versus uh, Homelander episode. So you're thinking, okay, it wasn't any. Uh, it should I review like I watched an episode with just two comic book characters before. And I didn't get a copyright strike from them. I thought it was just the anime uh, or manga that was the issue. It's weird. And it, you got all these all guidelines, and it's like it, it, the whole th entire thing is stupid. There's nothing wrong. And this movie's been reviewed by tons of other people. Uh, but irregardless, I, I got a strike. So it's my second one. So uh, I can't post anything on YouTube until like at least. January 5th So that's when like uh, it'll be lifted. So that's when I'll start posting things like, I figure if I got another strike you know, from this basic thing uh, I won't be doing any death battle reaction videos ever again, so uh, So uh, that part of me and my reactions will be just done uh, uh, Which is a shame there was quite a few things I really wanted to react to but uh, maybe we, after I get like a thousand uh, subscribers, because uh, that's typically how people can email customer service of YouTube, which is weird. Like everybody should be able to do that. So that way you can uh, properly appeal a, a strike. If you're below that, you, you're just at the mercy of like whatever. Because who knows if you're actually speaking with a person. You're guaranteed if you got over a thousand subscribers and you can actually be at that point where you can actually because uh, I looked this up after the first strike. So I will be posting my uh, spoiler reviews here on Twitch. And then once the strike is lifted, I'll post it later. So this is like information from the past to the future. If you see this later on YouTube. So anyway. I will be reviewing Glass Onion, the Knives Out sequel, which I gotta say, I thoroughly enjoy these Knives Out moves. I love murder mysteries. I like the uh, Murder on the Orient Express and uh, and, and its sequel, uh, uh, Death on the Nile. You know, I think I like the. Uh, I, I I like Death on the Nile fine. I did like a a, a spoiler review of that uh film uh when it came out last year you can check it out on my youtube channel uh youtube.com slash talking of carl in fact i pull my links in the description right here and there that you can uh see and go to the link uh you also follow me on my patreon which i usually like to post uh personalized videos or answer particular requests there's different tiers so you can uh put in like a uh, different uh specialized requests of videos that you want me to do whether it's reviews or personal questions or whatever like that uh uh you can check out my patreon and and uh you know see which ones you like uh of course my twitch channel where i normally do my video game walkthroughs uh which by the way i'll still be doing uh, cause uh, uh, I'm gonna be I'll be going to work very little next week, but afterwards I'm gonna be you know, hitting the work like almost every day. So I think the uh, uh, that week is uh, is gonna be little uh, video game streams as possible because I'll probably be way too tired to uh, do much. Uh. So uh, maybe I'll just consider that maybe like a vacation uh, for streaming. Uh, 
Uh, so, uh, glass onion. So that was like I feel like murder, murder on the Orient Express better than Death on Now. Uh, I, I can't remember why. Maybe I said something in Death on Now review. But anyway, I think Glass Onion uh, is a pretty cool sequel from uh, Knives Out. Because uh, you actually kind of like seclude it. Because uh, I think a proper murder mystery, in my opinion, is where you're a secluded on one spot. And you got to wait for outside help to come. But in the previous film, like you're technically in the city, and the secluded area is this house that's just like what fifteen twenty miles uh uh away from any help, but you still can get some help here it's like you know it's Ben Juan block uh played again by Daniel Craig, it's secluded on this island in Greece, surrounded by uh potential um uh you know some of our people who one of them is a potential murderer and who ironically all came here to play a murder mystery with uh one of the benefactors there being uh the guy who's supposed to have been like killed and before i get into like who the cast are and, and like the rest of the story i want to uh point out which i really don't want because like some people want movies that are timeless but you put in certain things that specific like dabbing uh or, or uh, something to th that effect you're you're uh dating yourself and not a lot of people like that uh sometimes it'll it'll, it'll be fine if you do it as little as possible of it, then maybe just once and move on. But uh, there's right at the beginning of the film, uh, you get uh, the focal point is supposed to have been set, you know, during the 2020 uh, COVID 19 pandemic. And it's like, God, it's like, because I, I, we want to. Remember, as because I've been saying this, uh, you know, getting towards the year 2021, that I, you know, a lot of people, I definitely feel this way. I don't want to think about 2020. I, I want to just leave in the past, forget about it. I, I think we're at that point where we can, because I last Saturday I went out to a Christmas Eve, um, ugly Christmas sweater, bar crawl, and things like that. You know, I don't see anybody wearing any mask. I don't have to worry about like being, uh, you know, two feet away from each other. We can hug, hold, you know, hold hands and be in proximity, all that stuff. I didn't have to worry about all that stuff. And it's like, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to, like, I want to see this. I, I get it. It was, you know, the, by the time this movie was, uh, uh, being made, it was, you know, uh, I don't know if it was in the, maybe in the beginning stages or towards the end stages of the pandemic. Um, but uh, not definitely not in the middle, obviously, because it was like severe lockdown. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was like, you know, towards the end of the pandemic. Uh, but like you see people like, you know, uh, uh, wearing masks. Every so often you see like films, you know, like that with like certain crew members or people who playing like extras, like a movie extra, you know, you know, who's doing like a hairstylist thing for an actor in film and they're wearing like a mask, like oh, that part, like, you know, that, that doesn't trip me up too much. But it's just like, it's leaning into digging itself where it's like, oh my God, it's the like, it's just how, uh, cause, you remember when AOC, uh, I love AOC. Uh, 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 I can never pronounce her full freaking name, or at least the beginning uh, name. Crap, hold on a second. Alexandria. 
ocasio cortez i just want to do that right i really love her uh as a politician because uh, you talk about rags to I won't even call her riches, but like, you know, like a glow up. She was a freaking bartender and became one of the most influential uh, politicians out there. And she's just like, a, just like a, a, just a dynamite person uh, who I wish one day just to run for pre uh, she, I wish she just run for president because she would win like a fucking landslide because uh, she gets shit done, done. Uh, and call people out like she fucking see it. Like, God, I respect that woman. Anyway, uh, uh, I was going with this. It's it, it just, um, I, I just wish, you know, just to get into the movie, I just wish they kind of like just minimize it a bit. Oh, the reason I'm bringing AOC up because it's like she made that, you know, uh, what's that freaking game? called uh that got popular because she was playing it during the uh pandemic then you know afterwards it, people just stopped playing it which is happened all of a sudden we don't know why it just fell off like that but uh yeah, they brought it up during the game Awards show rap not fall guys uh shoot um Ooh, this is ironically like a, a, a murder mystery type of game. Uh. Uh, Among Us, that was it. Jesus. Oh, she also was a fan of League of Legends. Who knew? Uh, anyway, sorry. I just had to, because it would be bothering me if I don't even remember. It. You know. Uh, so, uh, she she plays. Uh, 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 uh this this game is shown because it was like a very popular during the pandemic. So. Uh, you see Benoit Blanc playing that with a couple of stars I remember. Uh, one is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and the other woman who was on, um, who was like one of the people from American Pie. And she was on uh, Orange is the New Black. I'm blanking on her doggone name. I really like her as an actress. Uh, but it was a couple of other people he was playing with. And of course, he loses. And he, it's been like... Um, uh, uh, point it out because you play things like that or the board game Clue. He often mentions he suck at those because I guess it's because it's not like a real mystery type of thing. Uh, like he's uh 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 like he's used to because it's like a real thing. Uh, if it's fake, you know he's like. You know, he, he doesn't understand it kind of situation, which you know, it was, you know, uh, they often like a lot of people often like point out, I was like, you would think you'd be good at this. It's like, you know, it's like <laughs> it, I, that part kind of got me. It's like, it's kind of like the movie Hitch, uh, the Will Smith movie that I also reviewed last year for, uh, was it last year or earlier this year for the month of February for a, a Valentine's Day type of movie? And this guy who often helps other guys uh, find the connection with women they're interested in can't seem to do that, apply that for himself, that kind of thing. It, it's just like uh, some kind of mechanism just kind of goes off kilter. Uh, uh, but anyway, this movie stars, of course, Daniel Craig as Benoit Blanc. Edward Norton is this uh, billionaire benefactor Miles Braun, Janelle Monet as Helen, and her twin sister Andy, Catherine Hahn as Claire De DeBella, uh, a, a governor of Connecticut. Which, by the way, like I was so ready to just count her as 
slight spoiler, but you know, she's not the bad guy, but she's having an amazing year since, uh, or at least amazing. Uh, she always had an amazing career, but she's really taken off after the, uh, uh, one division show. And of course she was like, you know, the bad guy there or bad woman there. And I was just ready to write her off. Since I saw her as cast in, of course, I think a lot of people was going to be assuming that because false, you know, red herring kind of situation. But it's like, oh, you cast her as this, like, oh, she's going to be the fucking bad guy, duh, because you know, Agatha, it was Agatha all along. But no, it's like you know, it's not going to be that freaking easy. But you know, you know, you know, Marvel MCU is like make is king and queen makers, because like your 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 uh, your career is going to be flying off the shelves. Uh. Thanks to the MCU, which I just want to point out. I, you know, it, I doubt if uh, uh, Kevin Feige or uh, or uh, 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 John Favreau is watching this, but I'm, I'm an actor, I'm a voice actor uh, 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 primarily, but I would love to be cast in the MCU as Super Scroll, my favorite fucking. A Marvel villain uh, next to like the Scorpion, uh, but they already cast a guy who they didn't even bring back at no point for any of Spider Man films. But uh, I would love to be cast as the Super Scroll. I freaking love the Super Scroll. He's like the most, like one of the most interesting bad guys that I grew up uh, watching. Uh, but who knows? They probably got that guy cast more than likely or thinking about a list of people already. Uh, Leslie Autumn Jr. as Lionel Toussaint, uh, scientist at Miles Company. Uh, Kate Hudson as Birdie J, uh, former supermodel, uh, turned fashion designer. Dave Patisa as Duke Cody, uh, uh, men's rights activist and streamer. Uh, Jessica Henwick, who also is just like dominating right now, you know, it's like, you know, with, uh, she she was in like the recent Matrix films and uh uh she was in a couple of other things I'm just blanking off the top of my head but I think that was, Mixes Four is probably the first one that I actually like uh, you know took stock in her she was also if you remember in Star Wars Force Awakens that uh uh female Asian pilot that died uh that Rose you know was upset about. That was Jessica Henwick, you know, playing her sister that died. You know, like, I only recently found that out. Like, oh, she was in that? That was her? Oh, it was like blinking, you miss it. You just really, she's just like a pilot died. Uh, Madeline Klein as Whiskey, Duke's girlfriend. Uh, uh, and get this. You got Noah Sagan who is like a, a, you know, like a slacker pie head that also lives on the island with Miles, but, you know, he really doesn't play much of uh, in the plot. Although he was Trooper Wagner in the previous film, whereas I guess you can, if there's going to be like a series of Knives Out type of films, which I hope they do, uh... Uh, Noah Sagan should be like uh, the Stan Lee of the franchise. He just shows up randomly as different types of characters. That'd be kind of hilarious. Anyway, these are the uh, aside from uh, the the pothead guy. Uh, these are the main players. And beginning of the film, everyone uh, received uh, a mysterious box from Miles. This kind of like puzzle box. It's a uh, uh, is a huge uh, brown box that somehow, thanks to Duke's mom, who like points out it's a uh, I forgot the technical name of it, but in order to start opening it, because Miles didn't set this up, he he had like other like you know big brain set up uh, this kind of like a uh, puzzle box thing. Uh, you'll know why towards the end, but 
you got like you know it's like a thing you gotta do to like you know kind of focus your eyes uh, like part your eyes or something like that where you can see like an arrow that points to the button to open up the box then it opens up and each is four different sections each one tailor made i guess to at least uh i would like to say like each one kind of knows how each one will work tailor made to their specific kind of like uh you know uh mindsets to like oh i can you know the you know scientist can figure out because he, he will be the scientist and uh Catherine han's husband uh kind of point out something then you know birdie was kind of an you know airhead i don't want to say airhead but it's like you know she's you know i want to say supermodels are idiots they got brains but they're not like attuned to certain things like you know puzzle solving like that uh but you know uh uh her, her assistant and some other random guy kind of like you know because you know they are in their own little parts of the you know country uh you know you know uh captain Hans in connecticut and you know uh birdies in some kind of and, and pegs in some kind of like a party she's throwing uh 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 two signs in this uh uh lab uh and, and duke is at his mom's house and he's trying to uh, figure out how to open this thing and it opens into this miniature glass onion thing with an invitation uh uh to greece uh to visit miles because apparently he has these kind of uh uh gatherings once a year for uh his friends um I guess he, you know, no, if he's having these kind of things, I doubt he, do, he sends out these little uh, contrived invitations. But I guess to play towards the theme of what he had intended, of course, it has to be some kind of like a uh, uh, niche way of uh, sending these or, uh, invitations. But. Blamon Blanc also get these invitations. And of course, Andy gets the uh, invitation as well. And of course, as he's, you know, Andy's a, a jilted, not only ex, uh, you assume like a girlfriend to uh, Miles back in the day, but also uh, business partners who. Uh, is jilted because she was ousted from the company and when she got her little box it, 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 she's just like after the opening <laughs> like in the, in a confusing ass fucking way she didn't bother to call and reach out to you know see how the invitation is gonna open so she just takes a hammer and just bash this thing open and takes the invitation out uh 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 of course everybody shows up and people like you know like oh they're surprised that ben one block is uh here and of course everybody knows ben one block it's like just like with uh i really want somebody to do maybe uh watch mojo because i love watching uh my watch mojo videos i really want them to do like uh since now glass onion has a sequel because uh uh the uh agatha christie uh, adaptive films uh murder or on the older express has two films now you can probably compare these two detectives i forgot the detective's name in paro now you can compare paro with Benoit Blanc, and in terms of their detective skills, and who who's like a, a best detective? Because not because you know, because uh, of course these famed uh, gumshoes 
as you know famous from uh you know in the world and everybody like oh that's like I, I think I was watching Dan Merle's uh review on Death of the Nile and I'm pretty sure it was there he brought up because I love Dan Merle I think I watched a lot of Dan Merle's uh content me and him are like you know always eye to eye in terms of like you know how because you know 99 percent of the time like like i think the same way he's thinking because like you know like when it comes to when it comes to movies and and like celebrities and all this other stuff going on the only thing like i you know i actually at least off the top of my head that i disagreed with him on is he did not like the Corella movie. I love the Corella movie. I think that was like a more proper. If you want to do a Disney remake, that is a remake through and through. Because it's technically a prequel. So they're forced to make an original story. Unlike most of the others who, aside from maybe Peace Dragon and uh, uh, and uh, the Male- Maleficent, all the other stuff is pretty much a shot for shot in different graphics. While you need to watch that stuff, you can just watch the original if you're going to do the exact same thing anyway. Uh, but he, he didn't care for Corella like that. I did. That's probably one of the rare things I actually disagreed with him on. But he pointed out about, like, the detectives, like, how, you know, in real life, who do you know, like, a, a world-famous detective? There's detectives out there, but... And even freelance PIs and things like that. And it's like, none of them reach to the point of worldwide celebrity like that. And it's like, oh, like you're having to be in like an office Christmas party or something like that. And you see like a guy, you know, by the bar, like, hey, you're detective, you know, you know, Simon you know uh uh williams uh, uh the fame uh detective who solves that murder in 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 uh uh in australia like you know you're that guy and it's like no nobody wouldn't nobody wouldn't you know there's the good detectives out there in the world none of them is going to be like so good that they make the paper maybe they or on occasion maybe they do depending on the high profileness of it but is you know it's like i guess that's the whole point of these type of uh type of genre of uh mystery uh films you know they gotta be world renowned type of guy but it'd be kind of refreshing uh to have these type of films but people don't know who they are because nobody cares about like these type of you know gumshoe type of people it's like you're a detective oh cool you know that's a cool profession that's all you should get of course on the way to this island everybody's of course is on edge because like andy's showing up and of course you know everybody's kind of weary of her because like she got ousted from the company no thanks to all these guys you'll know why pretty soon so uh yeah miles greets everybody and um uh, shows them around the place very gorgeous uh setting i gotta say and I, I would love to visit greece one day i think last year it was so weird last in 2021 almost i'm pretty sure it's 2021 Almost everybody was visiting Greece all of a sudden. It's like, you, you, like you know, I see on Instagram and all these news reports and stuff like that with like, you know, all these different people visiting Greece. Like, why is everybody just flocking to Greece all of a sudden? It's just like something in the air. Like everybody's thinking the exact same thing. Uh, it was very weird. But anyway, uh, so. Uh, they all came here and Miles brings uh, uh, Benoit to his private quarters and asks him like you know what are you doing here I didn't invite you and 
Benoit says like I got the same invitation as everybody else like he shows him the invitation and it's like I received a box and like wait you received a box like yeah like you know cause they're both confused now cause like I didn't specify sending you one and you know they just conclude maybe somebody reset it and send it one to him and so you know miles going just gonna roll with it oh like cool somebody must have just invited you to you know uh try to you know spice things up make things more interesting like oh okay cool just stay here then it's fine it'll, it'll be more fun this way and even though this is probably the one moment where you get kind of like a notion about the what happened in the previous film which i think is proper because yesterday at work of a coworker of mine, uh, she asked, you know, you know, should I see the uh, previous movie? And I was like, no, no, you really don't need to. And it, you generally don't need to see the first Knives Out, even though I highly recommend go see Knives Out. But there's this is a completely different adventure, just like Mur Murder on the Order and Express. You don't need to see that movie to watch Death on the Nile. Uh, the only uh memory of the previous film from from uh death on now is a person that's a friend to paro that's the only connection to the previous film because he was in the previous film uh uh in this uh benoit uh warns uh uh miles about uh receiving mysterious invitations to things because uh, in the previous film, he got a, a mysterious letter inviting him to the the grounds on the death of uh, that uh, the famous author in the previous film, and he doesn't know who uh, hired him. So, and that kind of sprawled because you watched my spoiler review of Knives Out because I did that this past uh, Thanksgiving November month, uh, my review month for. Uh, uh, November, and that's the only connection you have uh, with the. Sorry, I got something like a dust ball in my nose. Uh, this is the only connection you got in the in, uh, between the two films. That's it. But primarily, this is own new adventure, and I, you know I think this should be like Daniel Craig's kind of like uh, his own kind of universe, whereas like or at least his new James Bond type of stuff, like where he just goes on a different adventure with because that's the whole part of fun of these murder mystery movies lately uh because we haven't been getting much of them aside from these two franchises and each one has like a cool ensemble cast and uh and that's i think that's the fun of it and uh so um you find out once everybody gets sold in that andy you know they, they was all friends uh years ago and uh andy came up with the idea for this compound called clear that's supposed to be like a new type of fuel source kind of thing like clean uh energy type of thing but so far they haven't figured out the way to make it safe and stable because you find out later from Catherine Hahn that, you know, Hey, this thing is pretty much like, you know, can turn anything into the freaking Hindenburg. Uh, it's very volatile, but of course miles, we just want to push forward this, you know, despite the safety concerns. And since Andy was, you know, you know, partners with him without her, agreeing to it there's no go so he gathered all the friends to convince them to perjure themselves so that way they can oust her he can claim that he, he wrote it on a napkin uh instead of her and uh and she got you know completely ousted so uh yeah, so that's why she, you know she just kind of like you know completely angry with everybody. You can see feel like the cold tension between her and the rest of them. 
so uh you know they're supposed to be spending the weekend here and uh later that evening they're supposed to start this uh murder mystery thing and uh it's a uh it's a funny moment like this uh well it's coming primarily from ben Wong block the 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 things that made me laugh really hard Uh, this one where uh, he asked like you know miles like you know what do we win and and miles looks confused it's like you know that's actually a legit good question like if this is a game there has to be a prize it's like like an iPad, like he points out, like an iPad or something. I was like, yeah, sure. Like if you win, you'll get an iPad. And like you know, and he's like, well, just so you know, I don't really want an iPad. I just, you know, you know, speaking in generalities, is like a prize of some sort. Because like, yeah, it was kind of a good question. Like you do these type of games, there should be some kind of prize. It's not like we're playing a fucking board game. Uh, so immediately and this is really gets fun immediately uh Ben my block says putting uh things together about like the dummy arrow on a crossbow on a statue that is aimed perfectly at uh miles and and because there's these, he points out about the wristbands it's kind of like tailored to their, their vibes or chakras or whatever that's how they find it particular room that's fits particularly for them and he knows about locket that has this like a uh, gem inside that's kind of like uh has connection to birdie and he points out like oh in the end birdie's gonna be the killer in this murder mystery and then it, the way he does it is just impress everybody except miles he just looks at this dumb final like and then of course right when i'm cute like the dumb arrow goes off hits him in a chest and it has like a uh, uh, fake blood spurt everywhere <laughs> and it was so freaking funny and, and uh, just like the look of Edward Norton's face is just priceless it's like and it, it just cuts to uh, Miles and Ben while heading towards his quarters and, and he and and like of course Ben was getting off on this like because he's having a good time because he, he he's at home he was bored because like you know typically in these kind of movies like the fame detective is it's kind of like uh Sherlock Holmes when it's like if their mind's not on a case they get kind of uneasy because they're kind of eccentric and what have you uh uh because uh, they get bored easily uh uh and by the way, before I end up forgetting, because it was only happened like like a week prior to this movie coming out on Netflix, which by the way, I just want to add, I think this is a good movie to watch in theaters. Uh, uh, I don't know if, you know, at the time, like it was uneasy about uh, releasing it in theaters, but it's, it's weird. It's like, I don't know. It's like you put Buzz Lightyear directly in the theaters instead of, on Disney Plus, because I didn't watch it. I initially, a year ago, thought like, oh, a Buzz Lightyear movie. Uh, uh, But as time went on, you hear all these like, you know, poor reviews, like I'm not wasting my time with that. It's like everybody across the board did not like uh, the Lightyear movie. Uh, And it's like, like, movies like Turning Red was was good. It should have been in theaters. It's hard to say which one deserves to be in theaters and which one doesn't. But I think in general, you should go into theaters because I think there was like a model at first where it's like first 30 days releases movie in theaters after 30 to 45 days put it out on streaming platforms. I think that would be like a good model moving forward. At least, well, not anymore. I think you're at the point where you can release all these movies in theaters because not everybody's really worried about like the pandemic, you know, anymore at this stage in the game. Because everybody's, you know, like, you know, vaccinated. Everybody's, you know, there's still a few people here and there still wearing masks. But uh, aside from all that, it's like, you know, we must like, you know, I like to say we're past that personally because I think everybody's in that mindset. Like, you know, 
was it we gotta live our freaking lives it's done we're we all did our part multiple times over at this point so anyway miles is you know kind of he says he's not upset but clearly he's upset because the fact that he had people set all this up in particular ways so that way he can be he's all, at least a little bit difficult but uh, and because he went like had like a nice time with his friends for that evening, um, but upon Benoit's interaction with these uh, people, he comes to the conclusion with Miles that uh, each one of these people has a particular grudge against you that will want you dead tonight, for real. And it's like you know. It, and he points out like it's it's like you it's like putting a gun on the table and turning off the lights. So later, um, uh, the other people uh, uh, are finally, you know, you know, uh, speaking about the elephant in the room, and asking Andy like, you know, uh, what did they have to do to make things right? Because, yes, we'll get it. You're angry. Let's start pussyfooting around it and just, you know, just say, what, you know, what can we do to make things better? And, and then, of course, uh, you know, uh, Andy storms out after this blow up. And, you know, uh, Benoit and Miles, you know, join, rejoin the party. And, uh, after uh, Duke uh, takes a, a drink, he starts, you know, choking and collapsing. And he he dies, and Miles points out he drank from the glass that he had that Duke mistakenly picked up, and it had pineapple juice in it. And of course, Duke as hinted earlier in the, in the film that he doesn't do pineapple because he's allergic to pineapple. It would be amazing how many people are allergic to what something or other pineapple. And like, I know you, some people like, I think the most famed thing people are allergic to that you know of is like, you know, uh, pets, peanuts, you know, when it turns to like, you know, you know, you know, going to a shock and stuff like that. And matter of fact, in the invitation, they point out is there if there's things dietary restrictions, uh, please CC, you know, you know, whatever. And it's like, why didn't Duke point out like, you know, uh, make sure that, you know, there's, you know, little to no pineapple uh, on the island because I'm allergic to that. Or, uh, uh, or, or, or like they should have, either they should have a, you know, I was a first aid kit on the island, but also like an EpiPen just in case. I think that's kind of standard in a lot of like first aid things now. I'm thinking about it. But Duke should have been smart enough, knowing he has uh, that severe of an allergy, have like an EpiPen or something on his person. Uh, so just in case something happens accidentally, he can administer it himself and, uh, you know, and, and um, you know survive that part I, I thought like okay where's does anybody has an epi pen that's, that's that's weird that's like it's kind of like a standard thing like you know all the people that i know they have like a peanut allergy like always have some kind of epi pen at my personal job i'm pretty sure there are epi pens in like the first aid kind of like uh uh locker thing because it's a you know, different uh gauze and and you know medicine and you know uh alcohol wipes and all this other stuff even tweezers uh yeah these kind of things and it's like you know why why doesn't this island has like a first aid including a fucking epi pen to help out the people that's the thing that kind of stood out to me i thought like it's kind of you know I want to say a plot hole but it's kind of like you know this kind of something that somebody should at least raise like 
you know, because especially whiskey being his girlfriend, like, does anybody has like an EpiPen or, or something like that? Of course, I guess they didn't think it was like a alleged reaction at first. Uh, either he just choked. But anyway, everybody's freaking out. Duke's dead, and Miles freaking out because somebody poisoned. Uh, he thought somebody was, you know, about to kill him because he thought initially he, he was poisoned, but you no, know, he's just an allergic reaction, which you find out later. Uh, then it was like a funny moment where it's like after people are realizing that somebody's actually is going to try to kill him, he's grabbing hold of Benoit, the detective. Uh, he's like, you know, like a kid kind of behind like a an adult or something like that. It's really funny. Like, I give you one billion dollars. You find out which one of them try to kill me. <laughs> he's like, he's just cowering, <laughs> using as a like a shield. I was like, because he's a detective. It's like, okay, you're the only person I know, the only law enforcement I know is on this island. Protect me. One of these motherfuckers is trying to kill me. <laughs> it's like everybody's like, Miles, come on. <laughs> was, and he's just like just running in the opposite direction than anybody else. It was really really funny. Um, and of course, you know, Ben was instructing everybody to stay in the room, do not touch the body. He sends a uh, 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 Lionel to go call like the local authorities in Greece to come here, which of course they can't do, you know, right away because of the high tides or something or other. So they won't be here, here until the earliest at 6 a.m. And it's like, of course, it's a murder mystery type of film. Of course, the local authorities can't be here right away. Uh, uh, of course, now everybody's wondering like, where's like uh, Andy at? But then the lights go out because you know it's supposed to be on like a timer because he thought the murder mystery uh, is going to be longer. And of course, like uh, it's supposed to like be included into like. Oh, this is part of the game type of thing. It adds some tension. So, for 20 minutes, the lights are going to be out. So, everybody, of course, like starts like uh uh running because cause especially uh now they notice Duke's gun he who he brought with him on this trip. I don't know, don't know how he got his gun past customs. Because it's especially like you know, we still like you know, uh, in our head after the whole nine eleven situation, people are cracking down on, like bringing you know anything that could be a weapon or chemical situation. They barely want you to bring lotion on the freaking plane. I'm not even sure. Maybe it was a private plane they got on or something like that that took them all the way here. But it's like, like it's no effing way you will be able to bring a gun with you. Or he must have bought it. Uh. You know when he landed or something i guess i don't know but his gun is missing so now he's you know miles worried that somebody's out there to kill him for real so everybody's searching for andy and people are freaking out uh, freaking out and you know andy bumps into uh benoit and then of course after just having this discussion with him, she gets shot by a mysterious assailant. And uh, everybody's like, you know, convening on the location and they freaking out now because now there's two people dead. And uh, after uh, Benoit brings everybody back into uh, the party area when the lights comes back on, uh, he's going on his long-winded kind of diatribe, but then you get this extended flashback, which I don't see that many often. I, I, we all know what flashback is, but we rarely get something like this, like a extended flashback. At least not on the top of my head, I can recall like an extended flashback. But uh, uh. You see, like, you know, the moment where uh, Benoit got his invitation, and oh, I, I was going to bring up, I don't know if I kind of glossed over, uh, a week ago, 
it's been like uh point at, pointed out that Benoit Blanc it is a homosexual man cuz like you know somebody was uh, the actress who played uh, Andy uh was interviewed by TMZ and and it was asked Janelle Monet cuz I think Janelle Monet is a uh, part of the LGBT uh uh crowd uh you know she was asked you know like what was it like for you know what do you think about like a straight person uh playing like a, a gay character and you know she put out as acting's acting you know uh, you can't like put everybody in a box like oh only a gay person can play a gay person and only a uh uh that you know or, or that kind of thing because you don't want to limit an actor because he, it, sometimes it, you know it, it, uh, it's important to be inclusive but sometimes you gotta allow actors to you know spread their wings a bit and and, uh, and, and stretch their act, acting muscles because as an actor myself I took classes and everything like that you're playing a character whether the character is you know bi gay straight whatever Although there's a few like exceptions, obviously you can't have like an Asian or black person, I mean an Asian or a white person play what's supposed to be like a black character. Like you can't have like a, a, a Hispanic person playing the Marvel character Blade. That wouldn't make any sense. Uh, it's just like depending on what the character, who the character is about, should be like you know. Uh, uh, or at least depending on the casting director and the director and the writers. If like uh, it has to be like a uh, Asian person playing this particular role, then only yes, call uh, cast an Asian person for this role. But in this case, the character isn't homosexual, but it's not leaning into that extra hard. It all depends on the actor and the casting director and the writers and all of those. So it's all up to them on how they want to play this, but. You know, yeah, Daniel Craig's a straight man, so he's just playing a gay character. It's not really leaning that into it. It's not even the focal point. It's just something that's pointed out that yeah, he's a homosexual man. That is it. Moving on. Uh, and you get to see his husband. Uh, so you know, the the flashback starts when the husband opens up the door and sees uh, Andy's twin sister. Uh, uh, bringing in this uh, uh, the box, uh, uh, the invitation box, and you come to realize that Andy, the real Andy, actually uh, uh, died uh, uh, from uh, well. Uh, that part, I, I'm pretty sure it was meant as a suicide. Well, he's ruled it as a suicide. But it, it, it turns out she was, was you know, uh, uh, Helen believes to be murder. So she's from uh, Alabama, and she, and she, like, she plays that Alabama accent really well, and switching back and forth between, you know, you know, uh, you know, standard the Western American and uh, uh, Alabama country talk, you know, you know, back and forth very well. Um, she uh, was the one that busted open the box. She, that was her who we saw bust open that box and stuff like, you know, going through all the trials of the uh, uh, puzzles. And she brought all that with her to Benoit Blanc including the invitation and saying like I need you all to prove that one of these people she has as she calls them to who she believes murder her sister and uh it goes tell him about the whole backstory between her sister and these people and uh and Benoit uh says that he can probably uh, hold off 
because he has his connection with the, the police department where i mean like you know what specific police department because it's like you know you assume i don't know what i don't know if it was new york or uh that uh he's living in because he's clearly in a city but I, I don't know it's like you know in the first movie like i think it's like supposed to be set in new york but it's like you know if he has connections maybe it's just for new york based kind of people like they probably would be know him a little bit more than just somebody you know because if this happened in alabama uh, uh it's never explained if if andy and helen lived in alabama or if andy lived in new york i'm pretty sure that's what she points out she lives in new york uh so i guess it checks that he, you know he can just hold off on releasing the uh uh the information that andy is dead so that way the others won't find out but only for like a week so uh uh he decides to tag along under the guys that oh i received the invitation too and he brings helen along disguised as andy in order to you know uh try to figure out which one of them actually did it and try to find because uh andy found the original napkin that's hidden in like a red envelope that she emailed to all her ex-friends uh in hopes to like you know you know i'm gonna it was kind of dumb i don't know why or what she thought was going to happen just go straight to the lawyers and police so that way you can finish this don't need to go through all this rigmarole like taking a picture of the red envelope like i got you bitches and email it to everybody what did she thought was going to freaking happen uh uh just you know go to the police and the in your lawyers and finish this and be done with it but i guess you know i guess it's worried about like miles like uh team of lawyers you know fighting her i guess whatever but um i guess she's hoping like to convince the others to turn on miles <clears throat> a probably fat chance of that happening because <clears throat> each one of them you find out has a stake in protecting miles because with his connections each one of them can just uh elevate in their careers or you know avoid uh problematic situations like birdie who is kind of an idiot because she has turns out she's in trouble because she had a sweatshop in bangladesh that peg points out that please don't think you thought sweatshops is where they make uh sweatpants and it's like God, you are in freaking idiot. Like, how how do you not know what a sweatshop is? Like, you're like what, like a good early thirties? That's like you know you went through your whole life without you know knowing at any point what a sweatshop is. Uh, and being like a fashion designer and all this other stuff, I'm pretty sure that should have been like a word on a lot of people's lips about like making sure you know you know they least likely have stuff involving sweatshops anyway uh uh well disguises andy you know uh helen starts rummaging through people's stuff trying to find this envelope that has the evidence that they need to prove uh you know her sister was right but then you see the moment where she get shot and you think oh my god like are we really taking it here because like you know because benoit promised this is supposed to be relatively safe uh at least safe enough but then like oh my god because because he's crying it's like oh my god it's like this poor woman i brought along and i got her killed but no she had you know 
Annie's journal or something like that in her breast pocket. Like, oh, how freaking convenient. That's very convenient. That's one of the most convenient kind of things in this entire film. I think at this point, I don't even know if you can call it a cliche, but it's like, oh, of course, you got a locket or a wallet or a book that happens to stop a single bullet from piercing your flesh. And it's like, uh, I don't know if you can say it's not possible, but the odds are just freaking, you know, insurmountable that, I don't know. I think, it, I guess I buy more than a freaking locket, but still. Uh, uh, but she survived and uh, thanks to uh, this Jem Jen Jeremy Renner hot sauce that Benoit got off the uh, 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 kitchen, not kitchen, but like one of the uh, islands that has all these uh, different, you know, condiments and all this other stuff. Uh, this hot sauce that he still had on his person and he used it to fake uh, uh, Helen's death so she can freely roam and go through uh miles's course to try to find envelope which he does and this is where fast you know into the present and he points out about how like miles is actually an idiot he didn't make his own puzzle box uh he didn't make this whole murder mystery thing you know he had other people to do it because he's he's an idiot and the fact that you know uh the only thing he did do is the fact that, oh, this, he convinced people that, oh, Duke mistakenly uh, took up his uh, glass of alcohol that had pineapple in it. But no, he, you know, Noy was paying attention, so he ended up, you know, like, uh, it's kind of like, you know, uh, Mandela effect you think one way when it happened a different way and so he has everybody thinking that you know Duke uh, mistakenly grabbed his glass when in actuality he handed it to him and he drunk the alcohol with the pineapple in it and and that's what caused him to uh, collapse because uh uh uh, Duke had his phone alert on uh, that eventually he pointed out to Miles about because he, you know, eventually figured out about, like, Andy's death and because he's trying to push his, like, streaming or at least get, like, a spot on Miles's like, uh, this kind of news outlet that he has an affiliation with that he wants, like, a guest spot on uh, just to blow up bigger even trying to push his girlfriend into, uh, you know, getting Miles to convince the work and uh, and uh, get that happening. Uh, and the funny thing with uh, Benoit points out is like, like, like is, uh, you know, it's just so. Dumb. It was, it was it was hilarious. This is the second part that I got laugh. I laughed the louds on, and uh, Birdie points out like so dumb. It, it it's so dumb. It's brilliant. No, it's just dumb. <laughs> because it's like you the whole entire thing is just is just you. It's just not even like, brilliant at all. And then like the and then that's when uh, Helen shows up. And reveals herself, and he points, and Benoit points out about like, uh, uh, like you tried to shoot who you thought was Andy, so you are straight up, uh, you're at least a, a straight up attempted murderer, uh, and I, and you took my idea because he points out about like it's like you turn off, you put a gun on the table and you turn off the lights because he the one that took Duke's gun. And now it, everybody's like, oh, the jig is up. You know, uh, Helen got the proof. 
that her sister wrote the idea on the napkin because the glass onion is based off the bar that they used to go to that closed down like eight or nine years ago and it's the napkin had the logo on imprinted on the napkin proof and then his supposedly napkin did not which proves uh you know helen right until not sure how that you know lighter got in his hand and he hold it up without uh her noticing and taking you know pulling it away but he just likes to suck it on fire evidence burns up right in her hand it's like okay how do you not see him pull out a lighter it's like it's, he wasn't that freaking slick like that so now benoit is stuck everybody's stuck and no one wants to fess up and be on helen's side which by the way she thought she could plead to whiskey because she had like a conversation with whiskey as under the guise of andy earlier in the uh day turns out whiskey isn't like a just like an you know uh like an idiot girlfriend she actually has dreamed of being like in uh you know has bigger aspirations possibly in politics she actually has a brilliant conversation with her so she has really no stake in all this but you know even she just like, is not gonna go against this guy because you know she has no like uh you know her, her words is not going to be good enough and benoit is like you know you know this is where my jurisdiction stops it's like I, you know that was the only evidence we had against this guy and so uh he gives her an idea and, and hence because uh helen doesn't like drinking but he's like officer offers her some liquid encouragement and, and by the way this dude had like the actual mona lisa in his party under like this protective glass that any kind of in indication of a possible damage happening towards it uh even one spark of a flame that's on the other side of the room causes this bulletproof last shield to rise up automatically every time because it's the freaking mona lisa of course and you know i don't care how rich you are i don't care you're the president or a kardashian nobody will not loan you not even alone the mona lisa to anybody something that fucking valuable in the entire world is one of the most valuable things in this entire planet at least one of them uh is priceless you are not you would they barely like people like breathing on it or even coming in two feet of this doggone thing it, it's like the declaration of independence it is a priceless thing you do not want anybody messing with that so he's just rushing out to loan, have it on loan and the most expensive part was the transport kind of situation, he said. So, uh, Helen decides to start smashing everything and everybody starts joining in because, like, you know, after this guy, because he's a piece of shit, you know, they can't, you know, turn against him legally. They can at least, like, wreck his shit. And, of course, Miles not bothered because it's just glass or whatever like that. It, it, but Helen takes it another step further and starts, you know, you know, smashing, you know, other things and laying shit on fire. And then she managed to grab the sample of clear and toss it in a fire. And of course, the room goes up because this whole island is powered by at least this entire, like, you know, onion, glass onion shaped part of the facility is powered by clear, even though. Uh, Tucson and Captain Han is like, no, this is, you can't have this unstable thing powering people's homes. That's why he's like, you know, wanted to show them here to, in this uh, weekend trip. It's like, I got this, you know, push for it, and it's going to be like, you know, the new power source. It's like, you're going to turn 
each house into the Hindenburg is not safe. And of course, then they can do about it. Uh, so the place goes up and it's like, of course, everybody mixes it out like it's a freaking cartoon. And it's like, no, the Hindenburg, if you look at, on, on like YouTube image uh, videos or just images on the internet, the Hindenburg is one of the most like uh, infamous catastrophes in his American history, and lots of people died. It's like a, it was like a raging inferno in in this uh, helium blimp, or not helium. Uh, uh was it helium? It's everyone. It was a catastrophe, and this place goes up, and nobody ends up accidentally dying or whatever. And then Helen, you know, uh, goes to a button to like lower the uh, bulletproof glass shield from the uh, Mona Lisa to allow the fires to engulf the thing, just to completely ruin Miles because we can't get you legally. So it's kind of like the whole. Uh, OJ thing or uh uh or uh Al Capone. We can't get you on the actual thing we want to get you on, but we can get you on like a different thing. Cause now you're in trouble. Not only ruining a priceless thing like the Mona Lisa, which will cripple you, but also once the inv investigation of this place, because the cops are on their way, uh uh once the investigation into this clear comes into play after you know they rummage through everything and realize how unstable it is you are in so much trouble and the movie ends with like you know ben was you know smoking uh with uh the pothead even though he's not smoking a pot he's smoking a cigarette but he just brought a lighter and you know helen goes to sit down with him as they wait for the uh authority to, to come to the island and I mean, I kind of like things like this, kind of, because uh, uh, sure, you would want this guy to uh, just get arrested on the thing he's, you know, uh, actually did. But this is probably like a, a cool, you know, shakeup. Like, you know, we can't get him, cause, you know, on you know, without the evidence. So we can get him on this other stuff that will ruin him, and it'll be a nice little payback for killing, because uh, he was the one who killed uh, uh, Andy by poisoning her drink and uh, uh, leaving her in a car, faking a suicide. And um, then the other guest decides, like, you know what? I saw him burn. The evidence, yeah, you know, like I saw it too, and it's like everybody's decided to like, you know, you know, turn against Miles. So he is like up Shick's Creek. So yeah, that's the movie Glass Onion. I thoroughly enjoyed this film. Like yeah, a decent step up. I, I, you know, I just, you know certain things it seems like super convenient that I didn't care for, like the whole, uh, oh, like the you know explosion, nobody gets hurt. The the bullet hitting the book, you know. I, I guess he didn't want to have this woman. I, I guess I'm not sure. Would have been ballsy to actually have this person actually die, and it was Benoit's fault that you know tried to shake things up just to find like the evidence she was looking for. But now two sisters are dead, one of it because of him. I don't, I'm not sure, but kind of glad they didn't go that way. I guess. Um, but like I, I didn't care for you just like kind of hammer home by the whole COVID nineteen. I just don't want films and you know dealing with this. I I, uh, I, I say that because there's been movies you know set around like nine eleven and stuff like that. But that's because of the remembrance of people involved trying to save thousands of lives from that catastrophe. Uh. Uh, but uh, 2020 is not something for remembrance, honestly. It was like a shit year, a shit pandemic because of a shit 
former president who shit the bed and caused like you know instead of like nipped this in the butt early on as soon as he found out but allowed this to like continue on the way they did and when it could have been a, I wouldn't say avoided but mitigated uh, and kind of shook the foundations of like uh, the world over and and, and ruined uh, lives and livelihoods uh, from a lot of people so it's like you know don't want to think about this ever again i kind of wish they kind of like okay people are wearing masks that's one thing and then you take it off and then you know move past it but you know they really kind of hammered home and starting to date themselves and i didn't care for that but other than that this is like a really good murder mystery and i really in thoroughly enjoyed it and hopefully in the third film uh uh you know uh I obviously this got to be a third film but who, you know what kind of ensemble cast will be involved in in this one uh, and like what sort of red herring is gonna um be twists and turns it's gonna be i'm looking forward to it highly recommend watching glass onion it's on netflix kind of wish it was in theater because i would definitely would have gone to the theater to see this although i think it's kind of perfect timing because uh, it's a cold, cold uh, Christmas weekend right now, so I'm not even want to step out right now for anything. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, hopefully you know, you can leave a comment once it's on YouTube. You can leave a comment, let me know what you thought of Glass Onion, and um, yeah, I will see you guys in a little bit when I cover the last two Christmas movies. Uh, for the month of December and I will eventually get all these posted on YouTube uh, in the coming new year January 5th to be exact so hopefully uh, uh, you guys will enjoy a, a late uh, spoiler reviews and um, yeah in the next coming year I'll have like a bunch of uh, uh, reviews for you guys comic TV shows uh, and uh, movies I got like a good list for particular things uh for primarily the 2023 but some for halloween next year christmas next year mother's day father's day uh fourth of july and uh february for black history month and uh valentine's day but anyway uh i will see you guys in a little bit take care